Okay, so now how do we incorporate this into our game without having this drop method here in our game? Well, the way there's probably tons of ways to do this. The way I'm going to do it though is I'm going to incorporate it into our waves. So this will be another option you can have when you're designing your waves about which weapon can be dropped and when it might be dropped. So, okay, so in spawning directory, let's go to our wave script. And we're just gonna add a few more variables here and I'll put them under this little drop section here. So first off, the wave might have, is gonna have to have a item to drop and I'll call it a drop item as well. And then we're gonna add a couple more options here. So we're gonna say, uh, we'll give it a drop chance. So by default, I'll set it to one which is 100% chance the item will drop, but say you wanted to add more probability, you could reduce that. And then I also want to know when during the wave. So we'll call this drop when. And this is also gonna be a number between one and zero. So where, this is where zero equals the beginning of the wave and 1.0 equals the end of the wave. Now, we're not actually gonna to want to use 1.0 because that complicates things to drop at the end of a wave since the nav map is changing for the new level. If you, if you want something to drop at an end of a wave, just make it actually drop at the beginning of the next wave. Uh, that makes more sense. So why don't we just set this to 0 0.5 now? So it should drop in the middle of the wave after half the enemies have spawned, I guess. Uh, I think what we'll do is if there is a drop and you don't get it by the time you finish the level, then the any drops left in the scene will have to will have to queue free them disappear them for the new level to take place since the where the drop item is might show up where a, uh, an obstacle is in the new level as it appears so okay so we have some variables now in our wave scene here oops there we go so drop item drop chance and when i'm just going to leave these blanks as defaults because we're going to want to be specific to the levels we're working on here. So in our level generator, generated levels, we'll go to the nav map one here. So the player starts with a pistol and then the next kind of item power up is going to be the shotgun. Guns here. So let's drop the shotgun there. I'm going to say it has a 100% chance of dropping after uh, there's one enemy, so I'll make two enemies. So it should drop after, if we if we write our logic correctly, it should drop after the first enemy dies. Okay, and then, uh, well, let's just get this working first. So I'll save that. So let's go back to our dropper script here. Actually, we're gonna wanna go to our spawner script because our spawner script is where all the wave logic is, right? So. Each time an enemy dies, um, on, here we go, on enemy stats, you died signal, we're gonna wanna check if an item should be dropped. So what we can do is we can go if current wave, which holds the wave currently going, obviously, and we'll create a new method called should drop. And the we'll have to pass it some info, so maybe we'll pass it the number of enemies killed this wave It'll already know how many enemies are supposed to be in the wave, so that way it can determine it. And this will just tr return true or false. And if it's true, then we'll emit a signal, a new signal. And we'll call this, we'll just say drop item. Whoever's listening, whoever's capable of doing this, drop the item. And then we will pass it, the current waves, uh, drop item variable, which is a, I did it in caps just because it's a pack scene that needs to be instantiated. And then maybe just to check here, we'll, we're going to need to implement this should drop method in the wave script. So let's go back to our wave script here. Oh, wow. Wave's pretty boring so far, isn't it? So we'll create this new should drop method. We're going to pass it the num killed so far. So it's possible we don't want anything to drop, in which case we wouldn't have given it a drop item at all. So we should check if a drop, drop item even exists. If it does, then we'll determine the fraction killed of enemies killed in this wave. And it's gonna equal num killed 
divided by num enemies. Now, because these are both integers, uh, we don't want to divide integers because we're going to end up with an integer. So we're going to convert one of them to a float here. And then we should get a fraction. And then we'll check if the fraction killed is greater than or equal to the drop when value. So if we've killed half, and that's greater than or equal to half, then we'll drop, uh, which just means returning true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Mm, OK, let's see. Uh, so no drops. Uh, let's kill one guy. I see the word dropping. I do not see a drop, however. <laughs> OK, so it said dropping, uh, which means in our spawner script, it's dropping. Uh, it's emitting a signal drop item, which does nothing at this point. So we'll probably want to connect this signal here. Drop item, which we didn't actually create. Signal, all right. Signal drop item. Okay, so the spawner is going to send this drop item signal. Let's connect it to our dropper here. Of course, we're going to get the drop item as a packed scene. And this is pretty simple. Here, we should just be able to go drop. Um, however, the drop item on the spawner here is no longer going to be a uh, an export variable. So instead here, we're going to set the drop item. Uh, they're both named the same thing. So this is how we would do it in Python. <laughs> we'll set the drop item scene, and then we'll uh, and then we'll do it. Drop item. All right. Okay. So after killing one enemy, we should get a drop. Hey, there it is, and it's a shotgun. Cool. Oh, but it does it again after we kill the second guy. Haha. <laughs> Okay, because of course after you kill the second guy, uh, the fraction is also greater than or equal to 0 0.5. So, unless you want it to drop an item after every kill, after your drop win fraction, then we're going to need to control that with a new variable we'll call drop completed. Well, to start it'll be false. Here we'll go if drop item and not drop completed then we'll check and if everything checks out then we'll set drop completed to true oops there we go okay give this a quick try kill that bad guy good there's a drop don't get another drop that one's still there I can get it I got a shotgun now oh my gosh this is hard to use <laughs> all right Okay, um, we probably don't want these items dropping in the same place every time. That would get a little predictable, which it just did there again. So, okay, so we've considered uh, the fraction killed, but we have not yet considered the uh, drop chance. So if the fraction killed is all right, then the next thing we're gonna wanna do is pick a random number here, which we'll create a new variable called ran a new RNG, random number generator, which doesn't exist yet. So why don't, why don't I do that right now, actually? Control K that. Here we'll go RNG, random number generator, dot new. And in our ready method, we'll randomize that. Otherwise, we'll get, despite it being a probability, that same probability will happen every time we run the game. So dot rand float, oops, control K. So we'll get a random float. And then if that's less than or equal to our drop chance, then we will drop, gotta indent that. Good, and right now our drop chance is one, but if I set my drop chance to 0 0.5, let's go 0. Point, yeah, 0 0.5. Uh, actually, let's set it less. Let's go just to test it. We'll go 0 0.1 but we'll have a lot of enemies. 
and we'll just do one second between spawns here just to test this. So it might not happen after the first one. There's only a one percent chance, um, but it, it's, it's a one per sorry a ten percent chance. But it'll be a ten percent chance after every enemy until it actually drops, and then it'll be completed. Also set the drop when to zero so that the odds of dropping happen right away, just so we can test this. Okay, so we got ten enemies. Killed two of them. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I think this went to wave two. What happened here? I, is that because I didn't save it? Oh, that's because this is in our default. <laughs> Why well, did that? Whoopsie. We need to actually go to nav map one here and set these things. Okay, so I want to drop from the beginning, and I'm going to set a drop of 10%. Hopefully after enough enemies, uh, and then seconds of each one will go 0.2, all show up right at once, and then at some point in here, I should get a drop if I can survive long enough. There it is. Hey, it's, it's, I don't know. It appeared somewhat randomly. You can output some of those values if you're concerned about the logic and the uh, code here. I'm happy with that. So the last thing we're going to need to deal with here is at the end of a level. Uh, when the level changes. So if we go to, if we delete this wave, um, and we just have wave one here, and we go back to two enemies, two seconds, I have the drop chance of 100% after the first enemy. And I'm not going to collect it. So we need to randomize the enemy spawning too, don't we? I know exactly where they're coming from. Okay, so, oopsie, there we go, uh, The that thing's like partially inside, can I get it? And I can't even get it because it's actually inside that block, that's a problem. Okay, so uh, in the spawner here, we're going to need to go find our start next wave, spawn enemy, start next wave here, because dropping at the beginning of the level uh, isn't going to work because our currently it's only called after an enemy is killed to check if we want to drop. So we also want to check when a wave starts if it's supposed to drop an item right at the beginning of the wave. So what we can do is we can go if current wave we'll do should drop again and we'll pass an enemy killed this wave uh, which is going to be zero and if we should then we'll emit the signal here as well. We'll emit the drop item signal and we'll pass the current wave drop item. Okay, so now uh, that should be easy enough to check in our wave one here. We'll set the drop when to zero and it should just drop it right at the beginning. There it is. Okay, good. So the last thing we're going to want to do here is that we remove any drops when the next level starts. So We'll do that in, I think it's the game script that calls the next level here. Uh, ch 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 new level right here. So we're doing all sorts of stuff. We're resetting the player's position. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to reset the spawner. So let's go dropper.reset. And you want to make sure we reset the dropper before we reset the spawner because resetting the spawner is going to trigger a new wave, which might... Uh, cause you problems if you try and reset the dropper after the spawner. So let's go into the dropper. We'll go up here uh, after the drop method. We'll create a reset method. And we're just going to want to check if uh, dro these, this drop item exists in the scene. We're going to get rid of it. We'll go if and then we'll use that. You remember this one? Is instance valid of our drop item. So basically, if we've instantiated a drop item, then we'll queue free it. There we go. And let's just make sure that happens. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, on the wave mm, in NavMap1, let's duplicate this. Let's uh, duplicate this wave. So uh, two shotguns are actually going to drop, and we'll see if both of them get removed. There's one shotgun. And then in the second wave here, 
Oh, it's doing it at the beginning of each wave. Uh, actually, that works. That works. Uh, that didn't remove, though. That's a problem. Why are you still there? Okay. Okay, I think we can fix that from our dropper script. Let's go back to the game scene and in our dropper script here. When we go to drop a new item, let's just call our reset method here. Just to clean everything up. And then that should avoid any issues we have like that. In the future, you could imagine having multiple drops at the same time. Instead of having a drop item here, this could be an array and you could drop multiple items. But for our purposes, this little simple system. Okay, so I'll leave that there. And let's see if that fixed the error. Good, that one's good. And now one more layer. Let's switch levels and see if it works. There we go. Excellent. And this level doesn't have any drops. One last thing I'd like to clean up here is you may have noticed our weapons here don't actually center themselves on the cell. <laughs> They're like off to the side because of course the weapon's origin is up front here, right? So when we spawn them, we want them to be centered on the cell. And I also want to add a little rotation animation for the pickup. So we can spend a couple minutes doing that. So if you remember back to the last episode, we actually created a drop method for any item that could be dropped, and that included the weapons. So let's go to our weapons, and we'll go to a gun. And let's look at this shotgun here. So the mesh is currently right here. So if we could reset the mesh origin to zero, that should center it pretty good for us. And I think for the rest of the weapons as well, we can do the same thing. You can see this here, so I better undo <laughs> undo those changes. Control Z here. Nothing to undo. Uh, that was a negative 1.4, I think. Yeah. Okay, so let's go do that in the drop method, in the guns drop method, which we have right here. Not doing anything at the moment. Don't need to print that. So what we can do, uh, we can get the mesh and set its translation. What script are we in here? Uh, yeah, we are in the gun script. Maybe if we go to the gun scene, this would be a little clearer. Okay. So I just like my autocompletes, that's all. Let's set its translation to a zero vector. Okay, so now when the item drops, it should be at least centered on the cell. Yeah, that looks a little better, right? Uh, the next thing I want to do is have a little rotation animation for when the item drops. So we already have an animation player for our guns. So let's add a new animation. We can call it drop. And we can do it on the mesh or the gun. The mesh is going to be reset to zero, but let's just let's just do it on the gun here. And if we go down to the rotation, we can set a keyframe at zero. And then maybe we'll have a rotation period of two seconds. And here, we'll set the rotation about the Y to 360 degrees. And we'll add another keyframe there. And if we go watch this, we should see it doing a rotation. <laughs> now, it looks funny here, but remember, before this animation plays, it's going to be moving it to the center, right? We also want it to go in a loop, so we'll tick the little loopy, and now we should have a little rotation. So let's see if that worked. Go back to the beginning. So one reason to rotate the gun instead of the mesh is just because the gun has no rotation already, so we can go from zero to zero, whereas the mesh, to make sure it's pointing in the right direction, we've actually rotated it on the Y, about the y 90 degrees so that it's pointing in the negative z direction for where it's shooting so that just makes it easier to rotate the gun so I'll save that we'll go back to the gun script and then after we translate it we'll play that animation so let's go get the animation player and we'll play the drop animation and this should also hopefully prevent it from reloading because it's going to stop playing the reload animation and just drop it mm, it didn't work it reloaded. What's happening? Okay, well, 
Um, let's stop that reload animation from happening right at the beginning here. We'll go remove that and instead what we'll do is we'll go into the gun controller script. So this is the players if we go to the player gun controller gun controller script here after they've equipped a new weapon so hand add child equipped weapon we're gonna connect some stuff and then we'll reload it then and let's see if that works okay look our, <laughs> it's spinning let's go get it we pick it up we reload it and we're off to the races.